The New Testament reading for today is from Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 17. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. The Gospel reading is from Mark chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist. And he ate locust and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Thank you, Linda. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of God's holy word. Please remain seated here in the sanctuary for our sermon hymn, Spirit of the Living God, Fall Afresh on Me. you to join your hearts with mine in prayer. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us, that we may know your love, that we may live your love, that we may share your love with all whom we meet. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Amen.
Friends, because I still don't know when Ruth and I will need to leave to return to Chicago for closing on our house there, I'm recording this service on Thursday. Yesterday, Wednesday, I spent the morning putting together the music and prayers for this service celebrating the baptism of Jesus. Following the lectionary schedule, our call to worship today was based on the beginning of the Bible, Genesis 1, with the Spirit of God sweeping over the waters of chaos to initiate creation. The role of water and spirit in God's work continue, continue to be seen in our reading from Acts and in Mark's account of Jesus' baptism by John in the Jordan. After I put the service to bed, I planned to spend the rest of the day working on my sermon. Instead, I spent the rest of the day and the evening watching the news coverage of the armed takeover of our nation's capital and its aftermath. I try hard not to let my personal political views overshadow the gospel in my preaching here at New Hope. As I watched what was happening in Washington in horror, being brought to tears and feeling physically ill, I could not then just go to my keyboard and write the sermon I had planned as if nothing had happened. I will still try to speak from a nonpartisan position. I will still try to follow the vow I took on my ordination to be zealous in maintaining both the truth of the gospel and the peace of the church, speaking the truth in love. As part of this service that recognizes Jesus' baptism, and one meant to recall our own baptisms, I'd already decided to record this week's service not from up in the chapel, in the chancel, but down here next to, next to our baptismal fount. I regard this as holy ground. This fount has witnessed many generations who professed their faith in Jesus Christ. I'm not sure when the church bought this fount. Does it go all the way back to 1907 when the sanctuary was built? Was it here before then? Or was it purchased sometime later? In any event, I know that many of our current members, and yes, many generations of families before, underwent the sacrament that formally recognized them as members of God's family with water from this very fount. Water from this fount. Was used as a symbol washing away sin. And it is proper and right that this fount is the focus of our worship this morning. This morning after we witnessed chaos try to break forth again and sin so, evi so evidently on display. We again need God's breath, God's spirit to move over the chaos in our land. Stepping down from the chancel, stepping down from the pulpit serves another purpose. Traditionally, if a pastor is likely to say something that may be more personal, personal in nature, stepping down from the pulpit is a way to not abuse the implied power of the pulpit that may add weight to his or her thoughts unfairly. And so, my friends, speaking from down here, I'll try to stay true to the gospel, but I am sorely distressed by what I witnessed yesterday. 
I hope what I preach today will be true to my vows. I hope it will be a message of healing because we truly need a word of healing. I need a word of healing. And so as I call us to come together to be healed by God's grace, let me say that I believe there is no justification or reason for the lawlessness we saw yesterday. Of course, I know that in our country we endorse the separation of church and state. Our First Amendment promises the freedom of religion. Within our faith and church family, we have the freedom to have different political views and beliefs. And yet, all of us here, and I hope those watching, I think, share belief in certain principles that we've either professed ourselves or our parents on our behalf to be confirmed by us when we came of age. These are the promises that we made or were made for us at our baptism. Listen to these, the baptismal promises of our United Church of Christ. Do you desire to be baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? Do you renounce the powers of evil and desire the freedom of new life in Christ? Do you profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciple, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able. Do you promise, according to the grace given to you, to grow in the Christian faith and to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's mission in the world and for those to be baptized we answered yes with the help of God if you were baptized in another denomination you would have made similar promises or similar problem promises would have been made on your behalf in all cases a belief and faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior would have been attested to a belief to grow and live in the way of Jesus would have been promised what I witnessed yesterday was not the way of Jesus of course Jesus didn't make promises like those on his baptism he didn't need to the climax of his baptism was that the heavens opened and God's Spirit descended on Jesus with a heavenly voice saying, You are my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. In Mark's Gospel, in the very next verse, we find these words, And the Spirit immediately drove him into the wilderness. The Spirit sent Jesus into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights so he could prepare himself for the work of ministry that lay ahead of him. Jesus didn't make the promises that we or our parents made at our baptisms. We make those promises as a guide to what being a disciple of Jesus requires of us. Jesus didn't need to make those promises, but he did need the power of God's Spirit to do his work. To fulfill our baptismal promises, we too need God's Spirit to be with us. Among our promises, we promise to, we promise to follow the way of Jesus. We promise to resist oppression and evil. We promise to show love and justice as best we are able. All of these
these promises are based in Jesus' commandment to love one another as Jesus has loved us. All of these promises commit us to show our love for God by actively loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. Although the heavens probably didn't visibly open, we've each received the Holy Spirit at our baptism. The Holy Spirit is how God works in our lives. The Holy Spirit is what speaks to us and moves within our hearts to let us know God's love is real. I believe that God loves each of us, his children. That God's Spirit is with each of us, even if we haven't been formally baptized. The Holy Spirit leads us in the paths of discipleship. The Holy Spirit is the source of God's healing. It is my prayer for each of us and for our church that we will look for the presence of God's Holy Spirit in our lives, especially in times such as these. It is my prayer that we will reaffirm our baptismal vows and look to God's Spirit to empower us to further God's mission in all the world, including working for the healing, working for healing within our nation. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Heal us. Bind us together through your love. I invite those in the sanctuary who are able to stand for our closing hymn. Breathe on me, breath of God.
peace amen